Check the description for the link to my new community Discord to give suggestions, chat with other viewers, and stay up to date on my channel. Now, onto the video. Welcome to Red Dragon. I'm here in Omotho, just chilling by one of the few islands in this endless void of nothingness. Today, we're going to be looking at the end of the plotline, so to speak, of the Abyssal Craft mod. I'm here in Amothal, which is the dimension where the final boss resides, and everything about this dimension is going to make this very difficult. Here I'm on a rather big island, but the odds of you getting this as your location when you make the portal is very low. Slim to none, you might say. The fact is, you're far more likely for your portal to appear anywhere in the endless void elsewhere. And if you do get an island, the odds of it being as big as this one are pretty low. I had to fly to find an island this big for a while. The thing is, most islands are a lot smaller, and they have just as many mobs as you're seeing here, though, somehow. They're everywhere, and every mob you do come across is going to be a difficult fight. Here are these ghouls that you see all around. Each of them has 150 health. And 75 hearts. So, I guess what I'm saying is, if you don't have the right gear, don't come here. There's Shogoths everywhere, there's these guys too. Means of the Gatekeepers. You're gonna kill a few of these at some point for the drops, but it's not really a high priority. The thing is, they have 250 health, so they're quite the fight. The goal of Amothal is seek and destroy. Your target is to kill the final boss of the mod, Jizahar the Gatekeeper. To do this, the first thing you're going to need is the Amothal Necronomicon. Right now you only have the Dreadlands one. To craft this, you just need your Dreadlands Necronomicon and three Skin of Amothal. This is obtainable in the same way all the previous skins were obtainable. One Essence, surrounded by eight of the mob drops. So if you take out your Staff of Rending, and start going to work on these ghouls that are everywhere. It'll fill up and you'll get an essence pretty fast. By the time you get the essence you need, you should have more Amothal Ghoul Flesh, sorry, Amothal Ghoul Flesh, than you could ever make use of. After all, this stuff, well, it drops off everything here, basically, and from each of these ghouls that are everywhere, you'll get about one or two. So, you'll probably have more of this than you know what to do with. However, once you've crafted up three skins of the Dreadlands, craft that together with your Dreadlands Necronomicon, and you'll get yourself the Amothal Necronomicon. This is the second to last book in the game. I mentioned this at the end of my last video, but the one thing you need to do in Amothal is find Jizahar, the Gatekeeper of the Abyss. If you open up the book, click Forbidden Knowledge, Amothal, then Progression, it will tell you the coordinates of Jizahar. Here for me, it's x equals 4, y equals 53, z equals 7. Then, you're going to have to travel those coordinates. If you have flight of some sort from a mod, that will help immensely. If not, you may have to go to the old Ender Island approach of bridging, throwing ender pearls, or using an elytra if you have it. Well, I just cheated and teleported to the area, and here you'll find this village-like structure. And... This one massive building. This is, well, where you'll find the final boss, so to speak. You'll find mobs called remnants in these villages. They actually aren't hostile, which is a nice change of pace given this mod. But you can trade with them like they're villagers, and they'll give you unique items that, are, that cannot really be obtained in other ways, such as elder engraved coins from this one. Other remnants will have different stuff to trade. And... Some of this stuff is the only way to get them. So, here I can get a Yog Sothoth charm. So, these coins are sort of like the emeralds of this. And they can be traded for other stuff that can be really useful or less useful. But these coins can actually be crafted if you get an engraver, which is three stone, an anvil, a lever, and two blank coin engravings which are just stone slabs around iron. So there's nothing really too expensive here. And then with the engraver, 
you can get these engravings, which are Shoggoth Flesh and the Elder Queen engraving, or there's just different types of Shoggoth Flesh around these Elder Queen engravings, which is an ingot with Blank Queen engraving. So you can kind of see how there's a bunch of steps, but nothing here is really too hard to obtain, so you can manufacture these coins. So it's like another way to obtain the currency. But this, this is why we're all here. For this temple, there's plenty of statues around, but don't get too excited. They aren't actually usable. They're decorative, meaning they can actually generate potential energy. However, if you journey down this path and up these stairs, you'll come to another room. And in here, we have him. This is the boss. Jizahar, gatekeeper of the abyss. Holy shoot, I had resistance 5 on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's my favorite part of this. That is hilarious. Here he says, EGCB 24. You do realize I could simply switch your game over and slaughter you right now? I'm that kind of entity. But yeah, that would technically be cheating. So I'll just stick to the rules and do nothing. When a boss breaks, breaks the fourth wall like that, you know you're in trouble. And I just got killed in creative mode. This thing is... Impressive. If you're wondering why my strength buff didn't make me one-shot this thing, it's because there's actually a maximum amount of damage you can do with a single strike. You can only take a few hearts off this guy with one swing, He's kind of meant to be difficult no matter what mods you have. However, it's fully possible to defeat him with just the stuff from Abyssal Craft. Well, I didn't get the maximum enchants, but everything is pretty decently enchanted that's on me. Like here I have protection for armor and stuff. And I made a really good bow. <laughs> and stuff. So I think I should have a chance here. See how it goes. I did forget blocks. Down here, where it's easy for me to get flung away by this black hole. And when you start saying something to start a spell, that's when you're in danger. So if you can get out of where you currently are, because that's when he's going to start doing stuff like opening black holes. Well, this feels like as good a time as any to remind you that you can help me out by liking and subscribing. I know it's redundant how every YouTuber says this, but it's impossible to get a YouTube channel off the ground without the support of the viewers. You all are my lifeblood here. If you could help me out, that would be great. If you don't feel like subscribing, that's your choice. It's disappointing to me, but it's your choice. Here I've killed Jazahar, or as he insists, 
have not killed Jezahar. Because if you read the chat, you'll see... Oh, I'm... Anyway, as I was saying, if you read the chat, you'll see that he says that... You've killed me. No, not even close. You can't kill a great old one. What you've killed is a simulacrum. A mere physical incarnation of infinite darkness. Some call it a puppet. Something that escapes a human when they delve... And he goes on about this whole thing about how... Now you thought a second you slow, you've killed me just shows how insane you've become. And he talks about how... He says that perhaps death is what you truly desire. And then he unleashes all his power and... I mean, it killed me, but the point is, you're supposed to survive it. And... Because if you survive the fight, it shouldn't kill you. And then you'll be able to get... What he calls a fragment of his being. I kind of messed up the final cutscene here. Where Zahar explodes and sort of almost sends you to another dimension and gives you a fragment of his power, so to speak. I mean, maybe it's better for you guys to experience the cutscene for yourselves anyway. Now there, that's the thing I need that Idra gives you. The essence of the gatekeeper. This is used with a few other ingredients that can be found in this dimension to get the Abyssal Nomicon, the final book of the mod that will have unlocked all knowledge and can hold the maximum amount. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take some of these bridges, basically, which is a Thaxium, smelt that down to get a Thaxium brick, and then take that Thaxium brick, put four of them around an Oblivion Catalyst, and you'll get a Thaxium ingot. Oblivion Catalysts are crafted from a ritual. We've done this before to make the gateway key, but now you're going to need another one. Thankfully, it should be a lot easier to get Oblivion Catalyst at this point because the stuff's just easier to get. Now that you have the essence of the Gatekeeper, the Muslim Necronomicon, and you also have four Athaxium Ingots, what you're going to need is just three Eldritch Scales, the only thing left. To be honest, you may already have the Eldritch Scales, if not, there are two ways to get them. One is to kill the minions of the gatekeeper that you've probably seen around, which are these guys. And the other is, if you don't mind feeling like a jerk, kill the remnants in the village. They can also drop them. There we go. Just got one right now. That's an Eldritch scale. Once you have all the ingredients, place the Necronomicon in the center. That's the gatekeeper on top. The Athaxium ingots in the four corners, and fill the remaining three spots with the Eldritch Scales. This will give you the Abyssal Nomicon. You now have the book with all the knowledge. This will tell you everything. It will tell you about all the possible spells. It will tell you about all the rituals you can do in each dimension, also, that have all these different effects. Some of them are crazy. Here's a really interesting ritual called the Ritual of Cleansing. So the Ritual of Cleansing takes eight statues. These to be the active ones, they can't just be the decoration ones. And what it will do is it will purge the Darklands, restoring it to its pure overworld state, or take the Abyss here and purge some of the corruption of the Abyss. So it kind of thing, make, peels things back in dimensions, making it closer to the overworld. Whereas the Ritual of Corruption, does the opposite. You corrupt an area, so you can corrupt the overworld and make it like the Dark Ones. This could be really interesting as a way to grief someone on a server. Or like if you're doing a battle, you could kinda sort of make it your territory in a way. Going through the advantage, so to speak. There's so much stuff you can do now though. You can make any of the statues by using rituals. You can do a mass enchantment and enchant eight books at once onto a single item. There's honestly just a ton of stuff you have now. I would say that I've completed progression now. You have the final end goal, the Abyssal Nomicon. However, there's one more thing you can do. Just step back and take a leap of faith into the Abyss. I am now in the Dark Realm, and honestly, there's nothing special here. There's no real reason to come here at all. The only thing you can do here is fight stuff. Forever. It's just a barren wasteland that has some mobs in it. There's no ores. 
No, nothing, actually. There are mushrooms. I don't know why, but there's nothing here. In fact, if you look under progression, the Dark Realm in this book, all it says is that there isn't much to do apart from facing infinite waves of shadow beings. It's good for getting a large amount of shadow gems, I guess, assuming you have a way out. If you're having trouble with the final boss fight, and I can understand why, as you saw, I died doing it, there is a way to get this weapon here, which is the Soul Reaper Blade, even though you can't see the name at the moment, and has 30 attack damage, which is a good deal more than any of the other weapons, which max out at 12 for the Athaxium Sword. So the way you do it, though, is you're going to have to fight an optional boss named Sakthoth. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. Sakthoth isn't nearly as hard as Jizahar, though, but you do have to go through getting the items to summon him. This is out of the way of direct progression, but if you're having a lot of trouble with that boss fight, then it might be necessary for you to have a chance of winning. There's a ritual that can be performed anywhere called the Ritual of Shadows. It requires a thousand potential energy and will use an Oblivion Catalyst, four Obsidian, a Liquid Antimatter Bucket, a Liquid Corallium Bucket, and a ODB Core. So let me show you how to get those all real. You should have no problem with the Obsidian since you all know how to get obsidian. For the liquid corallium bucket, it's easy enough. You just need a bucket and just go over to any of these lakes of liquid corallium anywhere in the abyssal wasteland and just scoop up a bucket. For me, it doesn't work because I'm in creative, but if I was in survival, there we go. I'm sure you remember how to get the oblivion catalyst. Depending on where you are, it could be annoying. After all, you do need four more shards of oblivion, which is 16 more shadow gems in total. So I guess it really depends on how many of those you have at this point in the time. It could not be worth it. You could try to fight the boss without doing this. I've mentioned this before on how to get liquid antimatter in a previous video, but for those of you who are only watching this video or simply don't remember, the way you have to do it is you have to find one of these corallium infested swamps in the real world. And if you mine around and look underground, you should be able to come across a liquid antimatter pool. They're pretty common as long as they're under here, so it shouldn't be too difficult, but you should have hopefully found a pool earlier in the game. If not, you're just going to have to look for one now. There we go. Found some directly under that swamp, and the important thing to remember is this stuff is straight up more dangerous than the lava. So if you fall in it, you will die very quickly. But as long as you survive, you should just be able to scoop up a bucket, and that proves my point. Now that you have your liquid antimatter bucket, you only need one more thing, an ODB core. To make an ODB core, it's just a crafting recipe. You need some iron, which shouldn't be too much of a problem, four abyssal knight ingots, which you should have plenty of, and a single corallium pearl. So there's nothing too bad here. Now that you have all this and the energy required, you actually don't need an item in the center. Just shift right click to begin the ritual, and in will come the boss. Projectiles do not work on Sikthoth, they just bounce right off. So you have to fight in close combat. This is going to be a tough boss fight, so you're going to want to be well prepared. But it's nowhere near as tough as Jizahar would be. Or as Jizahar is. And once you kill Sathoth, you get... Well, the reward's definitely worth it. You know, maybe I'm underselling Sathoth, because it is truly a difficult fight. It doesn't have as many of the same, like, sh shenanigans you see with Jizahar and all his spells. But... There's just a lot of damage coming at you, and without good armor, you can die very easily in a few hits. So maybe I shouldn't be saying that's not nearly as hard as Chizahar, but it definitely is easier. Now that's the Faust dead, some Shadow Beasts spill forth, but also a lot of loot. I got some 7 shards of Oblivion, a Greater Scroll, which will aid you in making spells, so you use that for spell making, a bunch of these Shadow Gem Shards and Fragments, and the one main thing I got was... The Soul Reaper Blade, which has 30 attack damage. The main thing about the Soul Reaper Blade is that when it kills, it harvests a soul. So if you go around killing everything, each thing you kill, it'll add a harvested soul. And this does a lot of damage that can one-shot most of the mobs running around here. The main bonus of these souls collected is once you reach a certain number of souls, 32 is when it starts, you begin getting potion effects and getting... Full heals, basically, that will restore your full health. This gets progressively better as you get more and more souls. 
So here, as I reach 32, it gives me strength for 30 seconds. When you reach higher number of souls, you get far greater effects. So how this works is, as soon as you reach the number of souls, you get fully healed back to full health and all the effects. This works out really well in the Jizahar boss fight, because there's all these minions around, and with this sword, with this much attack damage, you can basically one-shot them, and as you reach certain points, you can set it up so you're one away from the point when you enter the fight, but as you reach certain points, you'll get these great effects that will really help in taking down Jizahar. At the maximum number of souls, you get like two minutes of a crazy amount of buffs, including strength three, speed three, and a whole lot more. You get absorption, and of course, you get fully healed, which is always great to have in the middle of a boss fight. So, this thing can definitely help make an extremely difficult fight a lot easier. So I guess with this, you can see how even though it doesn't greatly increase the damage you deal to Jizahar, it helps a lot with survivability, and it also just helps take out all the stuff around him. So, it kind of builds off my point that even if I wasn't fully able to do it, it is fully possible to kill Jizahar with just the Abyssal Craft items. Now that I have the Abyssal Nomicon, and I have the Soul Reaper Blade, I guess I can say that I've fully completed progression. Probably isn't going to be it for Abyssal Craft, because... Aside from direct progression, there's still a lot of stuff to cover with other rituals and other things you can do, power generator systems and stuff. So I'd be fully willing to get into all of that and show you all how to do that, make that a lot easier, and how to kind of speed up the process there. Um, some other stuff I'm working on, though, is I gotta start working on my 100 subscribers special, because I know I'm a little late, but I didn't expect to reach 100 subscribers yet, so thanks a ton for that. And look forward to that. I'm going to be looking at the top 10, or at least my top 10 magic mods of all time. Well, thank you for watching. And this is Red Dragon, signing off.